name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have great sin in my thoughts and my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her. Nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold in view of her is a little sand, and before her Silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I love her, and I choose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. 
the word of the Lord. Our responsorial song. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all of our days. Make us glad for the days when you afflicted us, for the years when we saw evil. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Let your work be seen by your servants, and your glory by their children. And may the gracious care of the Lord God be ours. Prosper the work of our hands for us. Prosper the work of our hands. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. <coughs> A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed the world of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword penetrating even between spirit and soul, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him, to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. journey a man ran up knelt down before him and asked him good teacher what must I do to inherit eternal life Jesus answered him why do you call me good no one is good but God alone you know the commandments you shall not kill you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal you shall not bear false witness you shall not defraud honor your father and your mother he replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of the needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, Then who can be saved? 
Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening. A few announcements before we begin. As part of the course, this is the month of October, so we will be uh, doing our mass counts during this month at each mass. So I thank Lewis for doing that and sending that to me, that information. Secondly, when you receive your bulletin, you will have two announcements in a handout. The first is from, depending on what side you get, really. But the first, since this is the side I've lifted to, is from the Knights of Columbus from our parish. They will be hosting a trunk or treat for our children and grandchildren. And so that information is there. And it'll occur after a Saturday evening mass. So you could bring your children and grandchildren here and then go over into the parking lot afterwards and experience that celebration. It may take 30 minutes because I might finish mass a little bit early, but that'll give them time to decorate. And if you want to decorate, you're more than welcome to and just uh, have your car there. And the second is Dr. Hannah Corley of our parish is going to have a flu shot clinic uh, that she'll have. So, uh, well, Hannah's now married, so it's Lakowski. I can't pronounce the Polish name. So, Dr. Hannah Corley Ski is going to be. Uh, and I did the wedding and I still can't pronounce the name. But, uh, so she has the flu shot, so that information is there and available to you as well. Okay? Last weekend, when we were speaking about the question, does God hear the prayers of sinners, especially those who persist in sin? I was asked after one of the masses, but Father, what about the suffering of someone that the sinner, the persistent sinner, is being prayed for? How do we understand suffering? That's a very, very good question. Because suffering is something that you and I know well. It, it, what's the old saying? There are only two constants in life, death and taxes. Yeah, that's not completely accurate. There are three constants in life. Sin, suffering, and death. And those things apply to everybody. It doesn't matter if you are a man or a woman, old or young, conservative, liberal. It doesn't matter your gender, your race. None of that matters. It doesn't even matter what time period you were born into. If we were transported back to the year 2000 BC, I am sure if we found a person walking at that time, they would know suffering. We, in our time, 2024 AD, know suffering. And, God willing, if in the year 4044, there are men and women walking this planet, or whatever planet they're walking at this time, they will know suffering. It's a universal constant. So how do we understand it in light of what we're speaking about in the Eucharist? Well, that's a question that people have been trying to answer for many, many generations. We know as Catholics that we are created in God's image and likeness, and he created us body and soul. 
And throughout human history, we have sought through our rational intellect created by God to alleviate the sufferings of ourselves, our brothers and sisters, physically. At some point in history, some poor fool got tired of the suffering inflicted from carrying carry bur heavy burdens, and they said, there's got to be a better way. And they invented a wheel. It had to happen. At some stage, some poor fool freezing at night had to say, there's got to be a better way. Fire. And you can look at the beautiful developments that we have through our intellect and technology, agriculture, water purification, because even in the time of Jesus, if you ever noticed, in the time of Jesus, I know, I know some people say Jesus didn't drink wine. Water wasn't that purified. So they had to drink other things than water. Milk from certain animals, like goat's milk, because they didn't have a lot of cows running around Jerusalem at that time. And wine. But we have sought how to alleviate those sufferings. And the most beautiful is medical. Like, think about what we can do through medicine. Amazing, isn't it? That they can perform surgeries on infants in the womb. Wow, that's phenomenal. And how our life has been extended with metal in our joints now. That's amazing that we can do these great things and we can go back to living. But despite all these great advances, there is still suffering. We can alleviate the sufferings of body, but you know suffering is more than just physical. There is still that spiritual side of us that endures suffering. Everything in the world could be peaches and, and cream around us. Like this small, God, you got up this morning, it was in the 50s, it was cool, we weren't sweating. It was just a beautiful morning, the sun was rising, and you could experience all of that. You could breathe easy, but you still experience suffering. Because we're more than just physical. We're body and soul. So throughout history, man has sought through the use of philosophy, later religion, to find an answer to why it is we suffer. The beautiful book of Job, that whole book is a question. Why? Why does one good man suffer? At the end, does it give an answer? No. No. Because we still seek that answer. The answer is found here. In the cross of Christ. That is where God comes to provide meaning for our suffering. And that is a very hard one. Because we look at suffering and we take it so personal. Why, God? Why do I have to endure this? And if we speak as adults, can we speak as adults speak? Do you ever look at your child and they say to you, Oh, why me? And you respond, why not you? What makes you so special that you can't endure? Pose that as an adult now to ourselves. Why God? Why must I? What makes you so special? That's a hard statement to say to someone. 
It really is. Especially to yourself when you're going through it. What makes me so special that I can't endure this? Nothing. But where can I find meaning in that suffering? Where can I find the reason to continue on when everything about me says it's time to just lay down and call it a day? I'm done. What gives me that meaning to get back up despite what I'm going through and proceed on the journey? That's where we find meaning. And that's where God meets us. That's where God's church meets us. So over the next few weeks, we're going to look at that. Will I provide you an ultimate answer? No. No, I won't. I'll tell you that right now, honestly. But hopefully together in exploring it, we might come to an answer that works for us, that helps us find that meaning. And so we'll leave it there. May Almighty God be with you. May he bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us pray our creed together. I believe. For Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, with all the clergy and the people entrusted to their charge, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For those who hold public office and those who assist them in promoting the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for those who travel by sea, land, or air, for all captives, and for all held in prison. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered in this sacred place by faith and devotion, and by a love and reverence for God. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those in our community, both here present and those watching on video who are suffering, whether from physical, emotional, or mental illnesses, that they may be comforted by the resurrected Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all the prayers that we hold deep in the silence of our hearts, for all of our intentions spoken and unspoken, joined through the intercession of St. Thomas the Apostle. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and let us pray tonight for the repose of the soul.
soul of Mark Seedworth. The consolation of his family for whom this mass is being offered this night. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude asking Mary, the Mother of God, to intercede for us as we pray. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May your sacrifice and the grace of the Lord Jesus' name, for our good and all souls of the earth. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful, with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Most Holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, you have worked through you made all things of you since our Savior and Redeemer. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, Fulfilling your will and gaining to your holy people, he stretched out his hands to endure the passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the ages and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. <laughs>
similar way when supper was ended he took the child and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory
graciously grant peace in our midst, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grace the grant of peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for us today. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us all preach each other the sign of peace.
let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us shares of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thank you.